Hey traders, welcome back to Tiffany Trades Options. My name is Tiffany and I love to trade stock options. Uh, I got a request last week to show you how I set up the charts in my Think or Swim account and I would be more than happy to do that for you today. This is going to be a little bit different because I don't generally show uh, Think or Swim on my channel because it is quite sophisticated and can be a little bit intimidating. Um, for the sort of the new trader, um, as you can see, there are a lot of colors and lines and the like. And, and so I tend to focus on the Tastyworks platform and at least their internet based trading page because it's pretty easy to work through and, and become familiar with as you gain more experience trading. But um, in any event, Tastyworks has some useful features, but it lacks um, in other areas, including charting, and which is why I I keep Thinkorswim open in the background while I'm trading on my personal computer. Just sort of look at it as the day is going on, and I've mentioned that in the past. I I have some money in here. I, I don't trade in here a lot. I, I've i gotten a little bit too used to um, Tastyworks and E-Trade, and, and so I'm I'm slowly using this account a little bit more, but not, not nearly as much as the other two. But in any event, I'm going to kind of walk you through how I set this up um, and then I'll go through what each of these little indicators mean. So um, I'm going to reset everything here and I haven't done this in a second. So just give me here we go. So if you want to start over in Thinkorswim and you want to work through this with me, you can click reset workspace to default. It'll ask you to um, if you can if you're okay with this, and I'm gonna. Um, okay, so this is what uh, Taste Think or Swim would look like if you were a new user and you're ready to get into charting and, and setting up your personal preferences. Um, I'm gonna click on charts up here, and to get it going, I'm just gonna enter in SPX, and this is the default. This is what it looks like when you kind of come in here. Um, and the way I had my chart set up is I had two screens. So there's a little box right here in the corner and you can select the number of screens that you want to show. So we can do something insane and have three different screens here, but I am working off of a personal laptop. So it doesn't make sense for me to try to have three different or eight different charts coming up of various stocks tickers because I'm not focusing on that many stocks at any one time. And also because I'm swing trading, so um, I'm not day trading in the same way that others might be where they need to focus on a bunch of different stocks and what's going on. So I'm just going to select two, two views right here, and then um, you'll get your default on the left, and then you have your option to enter whatever you want on the right. So if you want to link the charts and you want to look at the same ticker, but in two different um, time periods, you can... Click this little link symbol link button and select the red button or the red indicator, which corresponds with this red selection here. So it'll pull up SPX. And as you can see, because this is defaulted, it has the same uh, indicators down here as it does on the left side, um, as well as the same time periods. And so what I generally do is I will sort of focus on the one minute, one day, one minute, um, time frame and on one side and then I'll focus on maybe the five day five minute uh, or the one day 15 minute on the other side and so to show you how to add customized time here because this isn't what I had previously you click on customize list and then you can add in your personal time frame so I'm going to add a time frame of intraday one day five minutes add that and one day, 15 minutes, add that. And then you can, you know, you can move these up if you'd like. Uh, you can add in more. So I had previously had 30 days and 90 days, like 30 day, two hour, 90 day, two hour. Um, but I'm not going to get in, into any more than that. But that's just how you add the extra time, time frames. And you just click apply and then OK. And to change the um, studies, so these are called studies right here. Um, I'm going to do it on this side as I had previously, where you just click on this little, looks supposed to be like a little chemistry bottle. So I guess they're trying to, um, you know, make a play on, on chemistry and, and scientific studies. And you click the edit studies button. 
and I'm going to exit this out right here. These are the defaults. Um, and on the left, I had RSI, which stands for Relative Strength Index. I'm going to add that right here. And, and briefly, going over RSI, it's, it's a momentum indicator. Um, it'll measure sort of the magnitude of recent price changes, and it'll help you sort of evaluate if a, if a stock or an ETF is currently overbought or oversold. Um, generally, uh, of an RSI value above 70, as you can see this right here, indicates the stock might be oversold and, and, and about to turn in, possibly make a reversal in direction. And so, you know, as you can see here, um, when was this? This was on the 19th. So a couple weeks ago, you know, SPX was sort of indicating that it was in the overbought range and, and sort of true to form. It looks like it it did take a reversal and then um, moved its way down and then eventually sort of is in the oversold range and then moved its way up. But as you can see, it's it's not a complete in like a completely accurate indicator in that it's moving in this direction. So it's not going to always go up, down, up, down. It will it'll um, uh, oscillate a little bit in between. So you know, just be mindful of that if you're if you're looking at these. I'll, I have a comment about um, these indicators at the end of the video, but I just wanted to sort of point that out right now. Um, values below 30 sort of tend to indicate that it's in an oversold range, and so you might see a reversal in the upward direction. And so, so that is what the RSI stands for. That's just one study that I sort of casually keep an eye on. I'm going to add the MACD. So MACD stands for Moving Average Convergence Divergence. It's another trend momentum indicator that'll show you the relationship between two moving averages of a stock's price. Um, the basic formula for this is that MACD is calculated by subtracting the 26-day exponential moving average from the 12-period EMA. So exponential moving average is also short for EMA, and, and that will create what is called the MACD line. This is this is that little blue line right here. Um, and then it's compared to the nine day EMA, which is called the signal line. And so uh, maybe I'll make this a little bit easier to see. Um, so typically with MACD, you can use this as, as another indicator um, to, to get an idea of how the stocks are trending. And so um, right here, the the MACD line is is kind of coming in in an overbought area. If if MACD is trending upwards this way, you would you would generally be going long, and then as it as it um, crosses the signal line, you can see that right here. I just zoomed in. Um, that would sort of indicate that you might want to go short and that the stock is going to take a reversal here. Um, this is not something that you should, again, rely on one with 100% certainty. Sometimes, as you can see right here, MACD will cross as if it's making a, a move in the long direction. And so you could potentially, um, you know, go long at this point, but then see that it, it'll start trending back down. So don't rely on this 100%. This is just another indicator that you can sort of take a look at if you're trying to, um, you know, understand the direction that a stock might be moving. Um, the third and final indicator that I had up here was the TTM squeeze. There are some videos about this that I'm going to link below because I don't think I can describe it with the right amount of justice that it deserves, but it's an indicator that'll measure the relationship between the Bollinger Bands and Keltner's channels. I can't define what those are for you right now, but I will also link them in the um, description below. And and basically, um, it you know, it's it. It'll sh it's showing you a directional move um, and momentum as well. Um, you know, if it's in this sort of this blue um, range, then th this is sort of an indication of a buy signal. And then if it's in, the, you know, red and yellow range, you're sort of in the indication of a sell or 
um, a short signal. And so um, this is just something that I look at. I'll be honest, I don't look at this one nearly as much. I, I think it's interesting, but I don't have the same level of experience with it that I do with RSI, MACD, or um, stochastic. So it's just something that I'm still learning. I, I have it in the background. I'm, I'm just sort of keeping it here to um, get more comfortable with it and more familiar with it. And so as I learn more, I'll, I'll share that with you, which is why I can't give it a really great definition. I'm going to link to other videos that might do a better job than I can. Um, okay, and the last one that I have on the right are the stochastic indicators. These are also momentum indicators that um, are sort of keeping an eye on the overbought and oversold. Um, their ranges are 80 and uh, 20. Uh, you know, similar to RSI, they, they tend to have a um, the trends, but um, you know, it, it again, these are all momentum indicators. They're all lagging. They're not. They're not going to be based on sort of the real time price action. They're a couple minutes behind. So this is how I set up my charts as I spend more time in Thinkorswim. I will be able to probably give you guys a better assessment of. Um, how the platform works if you want it. Uh, as I said, it's it's still a little bit um, over my head. I will, I will admit that it, it is a good and fast platform that have a lot of really cool features. The only thing that I'm not a super fan of is the price for their options trading. It's just a little bit more expensive than their competitors. Um, it's like $1.35 to open, and that's a round trip price, which means it'll cost $1.35 to open a, a position and to close a position. Uh, E-Trade is $0.65 cents to open and close, and then Tastyworks is $1 to open and, and 0 to close, but you know, fact, for all three, you're factoring in the exchange fees. Um, so that is why I don't also use it as much, but it, the, again, this is a personal preference. It is, it is more often than not a very fast platform and, and helpful. Um, they have an education tool up here and you can come in here and, and this is free resources again huge fan of free information if you even just sign up and, and and have an account but don't even keep that much money in it you'll have access to this as an account holder um, so I'm a big fan of that um, they have an analyze function here I am going to admit I don't spend a lot of time in here but this is sort of a cool thing that you can look at um, you can create watch lists I don't even know what all this is. So again, um, we're just here for the charts and how I set up my charts. If you have any questions about this, please do let me know and I'll try to answer them directly in the comments. Um, and I hope this was helpful for you. Again, Thinkorswim is a really great platform, but it is it is a little bit intimidating for sort of the new trader, which is why this channel generally focuses on Tastyworks, but I would be happy to switch to Tastyworks or even E-Trade, sorry, Thinkorswim or E-Trade Pro if if that's the platform that you think is more interesting um, for newer or more conservative traders. You just let me know. I want to give you guys what you are interested in. Um, with that said, I have a couple of account updates. Okay, so activity earlier this week, so on the 22nd, uh, Netflix closed for, I think, like $40 profit. Let's check the trade journal. Okay, so in checking the trade journal, so Netflix closed earlier this week at $131. So that was a $41 profit. I, that was about what, 20 25% or something. Um, I ended up closing the SPY position at 75 Dollars and then minus the fees collected 74.68. So that um, call debit spread um, gave me a profit of 22.38. As you can see this week, the market has been um, a little bit wonky. It's been going up and then today went down. And so I wanted to get out of this while I still had profit. Um, and Apple, oh man, yesterday, uh, Apple sort of continued to blow through the roof. And so I did what I talked about last trade video, but I was kind of kicking myself because I should have done it that day because it would have been less painful than what I am currently dealing with. So I converted that call credit spread to a put credit spread, but if I had done this last week, it would have been about a $5 wide spread. 
This is now a $10 wide spread, which I, I don't recommend doing this in a small account like this one. I am doing this because I'm more experienced and I have um, some experience with trade management. And so if, if Apple does take a downturn in the next 30 days, I'm, I'm fine with managing this appropriately, but this is not ideal. I'm not going to put anything else on until this whole thing closes. So there are 16 days for this trade to close. It's currently around 37 cents. Yesterday when, you know, Apple was up almost to 370, it was hovering around 10 or 15 cents. But because the market was down today and there was a lot of volatility going on, it's not surprising that this is now a little bit more expensive than it should be. It has a very high probability of success. So I'm just going to let it sit for the next few days and see what happens. Maybe tomorrow um, it, the market will trend green who knows it's it's a little bit weird but um so that's kind of what's going on in this account so it's taking up a lot of buying power you know there's 16 almost 1700 dollars in this account and it, this is this is 1250 and so i i'm not advocating this in any sense i'm doing this because i really didn't want to take a loss on that call spread because it is a small account so i'm willing to patiently sit through this and see what happens and and that is not ideal if you want to trade frequently but because I have other accounts that I can focus on, I can I can spend my energy there. Um, but I just wanted to give you guys an update with what's happening in this this trade account. Um, I don't know if this is helpful for you, but uh, I made some changes to the trade journal to let you know about total cr credit collected, total deposits, return on capital. Um, I will periodically drop in the transaction history here if you're interested in keeping up with what's going on. I, I am a huge fan of transparency which is why i have no problem showing you how i trade this is you know this is this channel's account this this is a, an account dedicated strictly to this channel and i just showed you you know the the thinkorswim account so um if you have any questions about that just let me know i you know i think honesty is important so all that stuff is on the um, trade journal and that'll be on the google drive that is it for me. I'm sorry if that was a little bit rambling. I, I've been a little bit busier at work today, and so I, I'm apologizing for sort of the last minute scramble, but I wanted to make sure that I did get a video out to you. Please let me know if you have any comments or questions. I've been getting emails from you guys, getting uh, messages from you, and I'm really happy about that, so keep it up. I will definitely be chatting with you guys soon, and most certainly next week. And thank you very much for watching, and I really appreciate you, and I will talk to you guys soon. Okay, bye.